No, uh, that I got something special. I'm a child of the king. I've been blood bought, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And, and listen, I'm not ashamed to let the world know that I'm a Christian. Uh, yes, I was born a sinner. And praise God, I lived a, a sinful life. I had a sinful mouth, a sinful heart, a sinful way. But one day I met Jesus. And when I met Jesus, hallelujah, he cleaned up the sinful mouth. He cleaned up the sinful heart. And he cleaned up the sinful man. He cleaned me up, hallelujah. And he's still cleansing me today. But I know that I know that I know that I know that, praise God, he dwells within me. I'm a child of the king today. I'm a little bit better, hallelujah, than I used to be. I'm no better than anybody else. But you listen to me, sinners. Those of you that are still trapped in the bodies of sin. My body, I'm living in a tabernacle of clay. But this old clay is going to be dissolved one day. And when it's dissolved, God's got a new place for me. And if you want to come see my house, hallelujah, all you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord. When he's drawing you into repentance, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when you hear the word and God pierces your heart of your sins, convicts you of your sins, that's when you repent. That's when you ask Jesus Christ to come in. That's, and repentance, let me tell you something about repentance. The world doesn't know this, and I, you know, most so-called Christians don't know it. Repentance means to turn and walk away from the sin. You don't go and wallow in sin tonight and say, Lord, forgive me. Knowing that you're going to go right back and do it again tomorrow. There's no repentance there. There's no repentance. Matter of fact, all you're doing is putting more nails in your casket. You're putting another piece of wood on the fire in hell. Because that's exactly where you're going. You don't have Christ in your heart if you do such mess as that. You have a form of godliness, but you're denying the power. You have a form of religion, but you don't have Jesus. Because when Jesus Christ lives in your heart, he's not going to allow you to go out and continually. Now, you can stumble and you can fall. I do it every day. I don't willfully go out and sin, Brother Robert, but I find myself failing God daily. And as I fail him, a conviction comes into my heart. You can't do that. And I call upon him in the name of Jesus Christ and ask for forgiveness. And then you can feel it as he relieves that burden. He relieves that burden. He says, son, don't you do it again. And you know better. But the so-called Christians, and not, they're not Christians. They're not Christians because had you, if you have Christ inside you, You'll turn and walk away from that. You say, well, how, how come I'm bound? Why am I bound by these spirits? You don't have Jesus inside. You had a form of religion. You had a, you had a movement. I tell the people in here, sometimes the air conditioner kicks on. Why are you at the altar? The air conditioner kick on, and you feel a cold burst of air go by you. Or maybe the heat turns on, Brother David, and they're up here praying for forgiveness, uh, and the heat system comes on, uh, and all of a sudden a warm rush of air comes by them. Man, I felt the Holy Ghost. I've been delivered. I'm all right. And they go out the door saying, I'm a born-again child of the king. And the devil sitting up there laughing said, oh, I got you now. I got you now. Church, Satan is real. The devil is real. But let me tell you something. I want, to, I want every one of you to know. And I want the world to know. I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you dislike me. It doesn't make any difference to me. Satan knows my name. He knows my first name. He knows my middle name. And he knows my last name. And that's more than some of you even know. He knows my name. Hallelujah. Every demon of hell, Brother Tim, knows my name. When I wake up in the morning, they know I'm awake. When I go through life today, they know that I'm walking. They know that I'm talking. They know everything about me. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, somebody else who knows my name, God Jehovah knows my name, and Jesus Christ of Nazareth knows my name. They know me also, and they know everything about me. They know every sin I've ever committed, everything I've ever done wrong. And let me tell you something. I was the master 
master of all masters in sin. And uh, Paul thought he had a record. Uh, but let me tell you something. Paul born, was born 2,000 years too early. When old David Bobby come along, uh, he took all the record. He broke every record that Paul ever dreamed of. Some of you may be sitting there saying, uh, how in the world could you be that wicked and mean? I was, hallelujah, I was. But I'm no longer, hallelujah, was, W-U-Z. I was. But praise God, I've been set free. I've been born again. I've been washed in the blood. And every sin I've ever committed has been placed under the blood of the Lamb. But I'm, listen, one day, one day I'm going back to that river. I'm going back to the banks of the river. But I won't have to cross that river alone. One day I'll meet Jesus down at the river bank. You see, some of you in the church know a lot about me, about when I say I've been down there four times. Some of you know the four times. Some joining by television, you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. But I've been, I've been at the verge of death four times in my life. And every time, Jesus put his hand out. You see, he holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. The death angel can do absolutely nothing without my Lord and my Savior's permission. And the devil has got so many of you scared to death. You're afraid to do anything. But if the blood has been applied, that blood gives you power of attorney. And he said, I give you power over all the enemy. And nothing shall harm you. Nothing shall hurt you. Luke 10, 19. Read the Bible, New Testament. Hallelujah. Jesus says, I give you power. And I've got that power today. You've got that power today. All you've got to do is exercise it. You've got to exercise it. When you exercise it, then you can come before the enemy. And you can tell the enemy where to go. You can stand on two feet because the blood is applied. The enemy cannot penetrate the blood. Can you understand what I'm saying? The world wants you to take the power away from Christ. The world wants you to take the power away from God. The world wants you to water down the blood of Jesus. The world wants you to praise God, confess that you're already defeated. The world wants you to confess death and hell. He want the, world, the world is Satan. And Satan wants you defeated. He doesn't want the name of Jesus. Have you noticed what's happening in our country today? You can mention every false god under earth, uh, and you can build statues, and you can erect museums, and you can do all things for every false doctrine or every false devil. But you mention the name of Jesus Christ, and every government official in the county will come against you. You mention the name of Jesus Christ. You mention the name of God, and see if you don't have a battle on your hands. Carmen. I'm, I'm talking to the person producing this program. You make sure the front of this is the one in Carthage. Uh, let's put uh, God, uh, whatever it says. <laughs> in God we trust. You make sure that we get that front. I'll, I'll work with you on it. But we want in God we trust. Listen, in Carthage, North Carolina. In Carthage, North Carolina, they put in God we trust on our courthouse outside. They didn't hang it in the back corner somewhere. They didn't put it back there in the back where nobody could ever find it on a bulletin board. They put it right out there on Main Street on the side of the building. In God we trust. And praise God, I went up there the other day, made a special trip. Gary and I went up there, and we filmed it, hallelujah, because we're going to put it on television and let the world know that Carthage, North Carolina still has a backbone, that we've got some leaders in this county that still ready to stand and say in God we trust and praise God we defy the enemy we defy the devil today I defy death I defy hell I defy the grave I defy it all why because I've been washed in the blood and church, it's time for us to get stirred up. We've got people that will come in, uh, and praise the Lord, they'll come in and build churches, uh, and they'll praise, and they'll sing praise, and praise, and praise, but they want to leave the blood out of it. Uh, but you've got to get back to the basis of the Bible. The basics of the Bible is the blood. It's the blood that sets you free, uh, and it's only the blood of Jesus Christ that's going to get you into heaven. Uh, you can try every other way you want to. You can go to church a thousand times a week. Uh, you can pay all the money you have. Uh, you can sell everything you have and 
give it to everybody on the poor block in the city. But let me tell you something. Except the blood of Jesus uh, be applied and except you repent and accept the finished work that he did on Calvary, you're going straight to hell. And when you get to hell, you're going to know uh, that you're in hell. You're going to know that something went wrong. And I'm going to tell you exactly what went wrong. The devil closed your ears. He would not let you read the word. He would he put doubt in your mind because I'm telling you today, it doesn't matter what you've been bound by. If you give it to Jesus Christ, he'll take it. If you'll bring your cares unto him, he'll take it away from you. Yeah. 